Oh, hi there! Welcome to another episode of the Okanagan Gardener and Forager channel. Today I'm going to talk to you about a plant that I've talked about it a couple times before, but I thought I should talk about it again because it's a really great plant with a lot of uses, and it's blooming right now, and it's right here, right all around me, catnip. Now, catnip has a long history of medicinal uses, but... Uh-oh. That doesn't look good. Oh, how dare you, weed! You're stealing sunlight from my beans and carrots! I'll show you! What is this stupid weed anyway? Hold on, man, that's catnip. That plant's not so bad. It's got a long history of cultivation dating back to Roman times. Catnip. Scientific name is Nepeta cataria. It's a perennial herb that can grow up to about a meter tall. It's a member of the mint family, so it has a four-sided stem. The whole plant is covered in little white hairs. The leaves come off the stem opposite, so from one central point they go out in opposite directions. And the leaves themselves are triangular to heart-shaped, and they have toothed edges. And they're green on the top and a lighter color, grayish, on the bottom. The flowers are in a terminal spike a cluster at the end, and they're white and pink with purple spots. And catnip has a fairly distinctive smell, kind of a sweet, musty smell. If you crush the leaves, it smells pretty strong and uh, it's pretty well known as being a thing that kind of makes cats go crazy. Oh, that's real interesting, but uh, why should I care about some plant for cats? Catnip has a long history of medicinal use and it is a calming herb that is gentle enough that young people can use it, like kids. It can relieve anxiety, insomnia, and hyperactivity and headaches. It has also been used to settle upset stomachs, hiccups, relieve hiccups, gas, and other gastrointestinal issues. And it's been used to help uh, settle the body in other ways, such as easing musculoskeletal spasms, cramps, menstrual cramps, and it's also been applied to bruising and black eyes. And more than that, it's been used to help ease fevers because it can help to stimulate sweating. And it's been used to help relieve the pain of teething. Well, well, how are you supposed to use this thing? I've been looking at it and strangling it for like a minute, but I don't feel anything. Catnip leaves and flowers can be used to make a tea or an infusion. If the water is too hot or if it's steeped too long, the flavor can get a little bitter, so maybe just under boiling water or uh, steeping for only a few minutes make, will make it taste a little better. Uh, the leaves the leaves and flowers could be fresh or dried. The leaves and flowers have also been smoked to help relieve anxiety. And uh, you could also use the leaves and flowers to make a tincture. I guess that's uh, kind of interesting. You can use it like a medicine and stuff. Uh, but uh, can I eat it? The young leaves can be eaten raw, like maybe in a salad or something, and older leaves can be used as a flavoring in cooked foods, and they have also been used to tenderize meats. Well, maybe this plant's not so bad. Is it useful for anything else? Catnip is fairly well known as a kind of intoxicant for cats. There appears to be some sort of genetic component, component to this, and not all cats have the same reaction. It also can deter ants, flea beetles, rats, and mice. And the essential oil in catnip, nepetalactone, has also been found to be a very effective... It has been found to be very effective at deterring mosquitoes. I've covered catnip in a couple other videos, um, and so I'll link to them. I'll put it somewhere around here, maybe. Uh, so if you'd like, you can check those ones out. Uh, but otherwise, I think that's about it for catnip. I've let these get to about this stage, so I think they're ready to harvest. 
and uh, so I'm gonna work on that next and if you like the video please uh, give a thumbs up and thanks for watching